grimdark. Half off. Nowhere is Robert E. Howard's love for the world of history more evident than in the cultures and peoples who inhabit the time of Conan the Sumerian. This is a brief overview of the cultures that would one day come to be the ancient ones you know of today. Starting from the west and moving to the east, these are the races of the Hyborian Age. A cultural lore note that will be important here, which we'll be going into deeper detail about when I finally launch the long-form podcast I've been planning on, The Gods of Conan, is the nature of gods in the Howardverse in general. To be clear, there are between 66 to 100 canon Conan gods, but between two games we've only seen 10. That's 10% of what this universe is capable of for role players. While some are indeed otherworldly beings, many are merely ancestors of the people in question. Krom, the signature god of Conan, for example, once had his own comic book series and was most likely a real person whose legend was taken and mixed with primitive animistic traditions, creating eventually the god in question. The Hyborian Age is set 10,000 years before modern recorded history, and most ancient cultures we know of today are barely half that old. Given that cyclical history is a theme of Howard's universe, many a fan has theorized that right now among the Nordheimer tribe of the Aesir, there may exist a man or young boy named Odin, destined for great things. As another example, one of the mini-bosses you can fight in the Conan Exiles game is a serpent man by the name of Apep. Regardless of what you do in-game, we can most likely posit that at some point in the future, there will be a heroic Stygian man named Ra who will do away with the Serpent Man after he has become a much more horrific threat. Make no mistake in this world that men can indeed become gods, not in power, but in legend. The last thing to go over for the sake of the role players in the audience is that while the following cultures would contribute to the eventual rise of the Greeks, Scandinavians, Etruscans, and Egyptians, they are indeed their own cultures. They should be treated as the fantasy races that they are. This also makes naming conventions rather easy as well. If it sounds like it could be an ancient god or goddess in that respective future culture, it's most likely a very good choice for a name. Please understand that I will be referring to the real-world cultures that inspired these, but that really is only because the games don't do a very good job often of communicating the full feel of these cultures. Mentioning their real-world inspirations will give you a better idea of their day-to-day -day feel, and that's better for the would-be roleplayer. It is after the sinking of Atlantis and Lemuria that this would come to be. First are those whose survival of the previous age and southward conquering from Lemuria of the land now called Hyperborea for one and a half millennia signified the beginning of the age along with their part in spreading the word of their universal god of justice Mitra, the sons of Bori, known as the Hyborians, while their far-off children would one day form the ancient to us cultures of Russia, Finland, and the Baltics, their current state is that of a diverse but united conquering race, famous for their innovative use of stone for defensive structures. To the west lies the two tribes of the Nordheimer, defined by their collective worship of the frost giant god of war Ymir, and their blue to green eyes with blonde to red hair. It is the eastern tribe, known as the Aesir of these warrior men next to Hyperborea, who inhabit the land of Asgard that will one day be known as the modern countries of Norway and Sweden. To the west of them are their brothers, known as the Vanir, who inhabit the land known as Vanaheim, that will one day, like Atlantis before it, sink into the ocean below. Sumerians, the race of Conan, inhabit the currently geographically diverse large territory of Sumeria, that will one day rupture into the British Isles and Ireland with the sinking of Vanaheim, birthing the Celtic people. Sumerians are defined by their simplistic near-animistic view of faith, in the form of the Great Bear or the Silent God Krom, respectively, and their black hair with blue to grey eyes. They are heavily theorized to be the descendants of the Atlanteans from the previous Lemurian Age, 18,000 years previous. One of the only true survivors from the previous age who remained selectively unchanged were the Picts. One day, culturally contributing to what is now northern and eastern Scotland, they are defined by constant war in their current time, thus have as many gods as there are divided tribes which endlessly fracture with new feuds, leaving the unchanged primitives in their near-permanent state of war-paint-marked and brother-blood-filled cultural ghettoization. Southeast of the Pictish wilderness and directly south of Samaria lie the civilized people known as the Aquilonians. Despite the time period, this French reminiscent but often depicted as Greek in aesthetic culture boasts a medieval level of civilization that will one day be lost and gained again by their descendants as they become the Franks before becoming the French of Charlemagne's time. 
like the Hyborians, they too worship Mitra. To the southwest coast of Aquilonia and directly under the Pictish wilderness exists Zingara, home to the Spanish-inspired swashbuckling culture of Zingarians. It is said that the Zingarians are descendant from the Aquilonians, who then mixed with various peoples due to their international and seafaring economy, eventually becoming their own culture and people. Many a pirate or pirate hunter hails from this land. Their neighbors are the even more merchant-driven, also coastal Greek-inspired people of Argos, the Argosians. Said to be born from a mixing of Zingarian, Shemite, and Hyborian bloodlines, this culture is defined by trade, mercantilism, and a very thriving black market in cities such as Mesentia. Like most of the Western peoples, they also worship Mitra. While the Argosians fill the role of the ancient Greek world, it is the Hittites of southern Kosh and northern Ophir to their land northeast that fill the role of what amounts to the culture of the Roman Empire. The Ophir having a more northern Italian to English flavor, while Kosh have a more Sicilian to Turkish background. However, both are Hittites and are united in the same unifying monoculture. Their relationship is comparable to the Aesir and Vanir. North of the Hittites are the economic and cultural rivals, as well as eastern neighbors of the Aquilonians, the heavily Germanic Holy Roman Empire-inspired land of Namidia. Largely in an inferior position militarily, they rely on their northern neighbors for Nordheimer mercenaries to make up their armies. Further east would be the people who would one day birth the cultures of Polish, Latvian, and Lithuanian, the Byruthians or Brythunians depending on how you want to pronounce that. There really isn't much on them, just that this was part of his history that I suppose that Howard never used, but he did pre-plan this universe with a love for history. So the Brythunians, if anyone would like to do a fan can and expanding on them, that would be phenomenal. Moving to the south, we find ourselves in the even more Greek than Argos influenced Corinthia, home to the Corinthians, unsurprisingly. Sadly, it is often very vulnerable and easily sacked by everyone from the Aquilonians through international extortion for protection, effectively, and Hycranian raiders. Finally, moving on from the west into the Middle East, on the border of Tehran is Zamora. Much like Zingara, it is inspired by Spain, but it's often talked about in the Conan stories as being a much more wicked place, filled to the brim with criminals, fugitives, and slavers. It is known as the main nation for worship of the spider god Zath. On the western coast of the Vilayet Sea lies the Middle Eastern Empire of Tehran, comprised of the greatest tribe of the Hycranians, who after being liberated from slavery in the east, formed their mighty empire inspired by Iranian and Persian culture. Hycranians, who are not Tehranian, effectively act as the Scythians, or even mixture of Mongolian and Ukrainian culture of the setting, occupying the other side of the large coast of the Vilayet Sea. These two are very high in population, and like others we have gone over in this list, are cultural mirrors of each other. Bordering Stygia is the land that would one day birth Abrahamic culture, home to the nomadic Shemites and all their skilled civilized artisans or craftsmen, the desert land of Shem. Inspired by Mesopotamia, Syria, Palestine, and Arabia, much like Stygia, this land is a love letter to ancient cultures. After a long wait, we come to the most relevant culture to Conan exiles, known as Stygia. Stygia is the country closest to the uh, Isle of Sipta. It's also theoretically where your character is being taken from into the exiled lands. And of course, we'll get a little bit into that further as we get deeper into the video, where the exiled lands are. So how far did you get taken? And the other side of that, if you ended up in Isle of Sipta, how and where you ended up. Okay. Obviously inspired by ancient Egypt, the current state of Stygia is defined by Thoth Amon's rule and his persecution of the followers of Ibis, who was considered the rival god of their current ruling deity, Set. The snake god Set is also said to have a rivalry with Mitra, which leads many to theorize that Ibis is an alternate interpretation of Mitra, found within Egypt or Stygia. This land, in its current state, is known well for its sorcerers. South of Hycrania and to the northern border of Ventaya are the Himalayan mountains, home to the tribal Himalayans, defined by a culture of fierce loyalty due to being surrounded on all sides by enemies. They are highly distrustful of strangers. In culture, they are very similar to the Hycranians, but with some Ventaya, meaning Indian, influence. Speaking of Ventaya, this Vedic, Indian, Pakistani, and Bangladesh-inspired culture is known for its ruling castes' unearthly beauty. 
They are known for their worship of who they view as the father of Mitra, known as Asura. Many from Venhaya have been persecuted in the West due to wrongful assumptions that they worship Set, but in truth, they have more in common with the West than the East. Farthest to the East is Katai, inspired by Marco Polo's Cathay and ancient China. Khitans have a reputation as mysterious, secretive, esoteric people who produce many powerful sorcerers, defined as an ancient empire of wizards who seek to keep their arcane secrets of their prized Scarlet Circle from southern invaders. Going south of Stygia along the coast, one finds themselves in the Kushite and Nubian-inspired culture of Kush. While their current state is not well known by the rest of the world, many a Kushite from the civilized areas will tell you that they are defined by a division of what is most likely smaller barbarian tribes and larger civilized cities. The Darfari of Darfar are the Kushites' neighbors, inspired by the Sudan, being very culturally diverse like the Hyborians. Darfarian barbarians are feared throughout the lands, known as murderers and bandits who style themselves after demons both for religious significance and for intimidation of their enemies, similar to the war paint methods of the Picts, but much more united it would seem. They are partially defined by their acts of cannibalism to honor the shambling horror god, Yogg. One that I almost forgot to include in this list are the Yamatai, some of whom are theorized to be from Lemuria because of its location and geographical region in what would later become Japan, as the culture is very clearly inspired by it. However, there is very little to currently confirm this. If so, it would make them the previous slavers and descendants of the Lemurians that enslaved the Turanians and the Hycranians, which would be an interesting bit of lore history. And those are the cultures playable in either Age of Conan or Conan Exiles, respectively, some of which aren't even playable in either games. I just included them because I felt like I needed to. For further cl uh, clarification of geography, your starter island in Conan, Tortage, is off the coast of Zingara. The Isle of Sipta DLC Conan Exiles map is located off the coast of Kush and Stygia, and the Exiled Lands occupy territory which borders between the more southern desert biomes of northern Tehran into the north snow-covered areas yet volcanic Hyperborea or Hyboria, and the jungle-covered coast of the northern tip of the Vilayet Sea. If you enjoyed this list, please subscribe, share the video, and comment below with your thoughts as it is only through the audience and algorithm that I survive. If you would like to research these cultures for yourself, links are listed below right above the very easy to use donation options which allow you to do the amazing feat of giving me money.